In this video, I will provide an overview on deploying and configuring the SDDC Manager appliance in a VMware Cloud Foundation private cloud. In VMware Cloud Foundation, you use the SDDC Manager to perform administrative tasks such as adding and managing hosts, creating workload domains, deploying and resizing vSphere clusters, tracking and applying software updates, and managing passwords and certificates. Here we see the SDDC Manager UI. The UI provides an integrated view of the physical and virtual infrastructure that makes up the private cloud, along with centralized access to managing these resources. The SDDC Manager is an appliance that runs as a single virtual machine in the management domain. Here we see that by default it is deployed with four CPUs and 16 gigabytes of memory. To ensure the availability and to protect the SDDC Manager, we use a combination of vSphere HA and file-based backups. The SDC Manager is bundled with the VMware Cloud Builder appliance that you download from VMware Customer Connect. Here you see the two files that are needed to deploy Cloud Foundation, the Cloud Builder OVA and the Deployment Parameter Workbook. Note the size of the Cloud Builder OVA. It is a relatively large file as it includes all the software needed to instantiate the full software-defined data center to include vSphere, vSAN, NSX, and the SDDC Manager. The SDDC Manager gets deployed as part of the Cloud Builder Bring Up process. Here we see in the Cloud Builder UI that Bring Up has completed. Scrolling down, we can see that included in the many tasks that are performed as part of Bring Up are the steps to deploy and configure the SDDC Manager. With an understanding of the SDDC Manager appliance, how to download it, and how it gets deployed, let's turn our attention to the configuration task that you'll need to perform after it has been deployed. I mentioned earlier that we use file-based backups to protect the SDDC Manager. One of the first tasks you'll need to perform is to configure an external SFTP server where you will store the backup files. Navigating to Backups in the UI, we see a summary showing the last backup status along with options to take a backup or to schedule a backup. Under Site Settings, we configure the external SFTP server. Here we see the IP address, port, protocol, user credentials, and backup directory. Note that this SFTP server will be used to store both the SDDC Manager and NSX Manager backup files. Switching to PuTTY, we can see the current list of files that have been backed up for this environment. Speaking of PuTTY, this is a good time to note that you will also need to have SSH access configured for the STDC Manager. While most STDC Manager operations can be performed from the UI or through API calls, there are some tasks that require connecting to the appliance using SSH. One of these tasks is to retrieve passwords for the deployed components in your private cloud. The SDDC Manager includes the lookup underscore passwords command. This command line tool lets us query the SDDC Manager database to retrieve passwords. Here we see how to use this command to query the passwords for the deployed vCenter server instances. Note, the access to the passwords is restricted as you do need to provide valid SSO credentials. Using the lookup passwords command, we can query the passwords for the ESXi host, vCenter server instances, NSX components, and when deployed, the ARIA suite. Another task that requires SSH access is viewing log files. On the SDDC Manager, the logs are organized into separate directories. For example, here we see the directories for the Domain Manager, Operations Manager, and LCM. Inside each directory, we see the respective log files. Note how the log files are automatically rotated over time with older logs stored in a compressed zip archive. When troubleshooting problems or when working with VMware support, you will need to SSH to the SDC Manager in order to view and retrieve the log files. Returning to the dashboard, let's go over some of the additional setup tasks. One of the first things you'll need to do after deploying Cloud Foundation is to configure network pools. The SDC Manager uses network pools to manage the IP addresses that will be assigned to the vMotion and vSAN VM kernel interfaces that are configured on each ESXi host when it is added to a vSphere cluster. Under Network Settings, we see a summary of the configured network pools. In this example, we have a single network pool used for the management domain. 
This initial pool is created as part of BringUp using values provided in the input parameter workbook. Here we see that this pool contains the ranges of IP addresses reserved for configuring the vMotion and vSAN VM kernel interfaces for the host assigned to any clusters configured in the management domain. To create a new network pool, click Create Network Pool. In this example, since I'm running on hyper-converged infrastructure, I would need to select vMotion and vSAN. I would then provide the VLAN, MTU, and IP settings and assign a block of IPs that the STC manager can use to configure the pertinent VM kernel interfaces when creating and expanding clusters. Along with configuring network pools, another setup task is to register the STC manager with the online depot to enable detecting and downloading available software updates. To do this, go to online depot. Here we see that I have registered my SDC manager using my VMware Customer Connect credentials. Once registered, the SDC manager will automatically detect any available update bundles when they are published by VMware. Available bundles can be viewed by navigating to Lifecycle Management and selecting Bundle Management. Note that the bundles are not automatically downloaded. The SDC manager provides a list of available bundles with options to download them now or to schedule a time for them to be downloaded. After a bundle has been downloaded, it will be listed under Download History. Here we see that I have downloaded the install bundle for the ARIA Suite Lifecycle Manager. After configuring your network pools and registering your SDC Manager with the Online Depot, I recommend you take a backup of the SDC Manager. To do this, navigate to Backup and click Backup Now. We see a workflow is invoked that will export the SDC Manager configuration to the files that will be saved on the external SFTP server. Note that the backup files are password protected. This completes my overview on deploying and configuring the SDC Manager appliance. To learn more about VMware Cloud Foundation, visit the Cloud Foundation Resource Center at core.vmware.com.